Okay, so I'm going to try and make this quick, uh, not as long as my last video. If you need help on how to download your uh, model and how to adjust the lengths and widths, go check out my other video. And if you want to learn how to also um, slice it and get your model ready for 3D printing, go check out the other video as well. This video, I am just going to show you how to change the radius, which is the corners of the iPhone, and also the um, diameters of the MagSafe charger and the watch charger. Um, thank you guys so much for everything. Thank you for commenting on my last video and for boosting my model and stuff on Maker's World. I've been blown away by it. I didn't think anybody would actually watch anything that I made, so I appreciate that it actually helped people. And I really appreciate the people who took the time to, to thank me and, and say, say hi. Um, it made me definitely feel like <laughs> all this work was worth it. Um, so I found the actual diagrams and the specs of all the iPhones. Um, I think all the way to five. It's crazy. It actually is available. It's public. Um, it's just hard to find. I went down a Reddit rabbit hole and that's how I found this. So I don't feel quite comfortable actually uploading this huge 567 page document, but I am going to put the link so that you'll be able to hop to it. It's pretty neat if you're kind of geeky like that. Um, it's also kind of crazy because it means like you can exactly see how much they change it by just a couple millimeters on some of these models, just so that we can't use the same <laughs> cases and docs and stuff. Um, so anyways, I'm going through and I'm changing all of it and I'm fixing all these and I'm going to do the actual dimensions. Um, but I wanted to show you. So here is the radius corner of the phone. Um, how you measure the radius, and I didn't know this, uh, you go from the left where it starts, the curve starts, to the right where the curve ends. Uh, Apple gave us the diameter for a lot of the, or the radiuses for a lot of these circles and stuff, but for some reason it didn't want to just tell you and come out and say what it is. So I'm, I'm going to eyeball it. I'm trying to figure it out. Um, I've updated my worksheet. Um, this worksheet that I'm going to put on that you guys can see my measurements. I had to do formulas because, well, simple formulas because I can't do simple math. <laughs> um, but this is the website. I'll go ahead and give it to you guys. And you, this is what you click on. You click on that and it'll take you to that document. So I don't feel bad saying that. Um, it's definitely public knowledge. This is not very easy to find. Um, so what I'm going to do is show you how to change the radius of the phone. I am going to go through and I've started making models of the phones because, like I said, you're kind of still shooting in the dark trying to figure out exactly what that radius is because it could be a little bit different with some of these. Um, sometimes the measurements are equal. Like this one is both 1375, but some of them, um, one number is different. So anyways, uh, like I said, I showed you the rest of it, how to do all the um, lengths and widths. So we're going to skip that. If you are wanting to change the radius of, it, of the corners, you're going to scroll back through the timeline just like before, and you are going to find iPhone profile. It is in, and you're going to hit edit sketch, it is in the parameters, but the thing is you probably don't know the number, and if you do know the number, it still doesn't seem quite right. Because like I said, I've been doing this, and it's still not quite fitting, so I'm eyeballing it. When you open up the model and you open up that sketch, you right click and open up the sketch, you'll see this. This is the iPhone um, original sketch. And if you see an R with the number pointing to a corner, then that means that radius is constrained. So it's set at that diameter. I did that on some of the models, some of them I didn't, just depending on how confident I was on the corners. But you want to delete this. So go ahead and click the number once, and you're going to hit delete. You can also right click and delete, but that gets rid of the constraint. Now, bear with me because Fusion 360 is kind of weird and it spazzes out for random reasons. These corners are all constrained to each other, so they should theoretically change together. You're going to left click once, and you're going to left click again. Sorry. Uh, that's where it's trying to show you what all you can select. Um, it helps whenever you have a lot of things together that are a mess and you're trying to just pick one thing. But you just left click once, and you're going to left click and drag. So this is where... Uh, so sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And this is where it's just kind of finicky, but let's do the right side. Let's see if it works. There, there you go. So as I pull it in, I'm left clicking a holding and I'm just dragging it. If you go crazy, it will spaz out on you and it may not go back to normal. So if you go crazy, just do the control Z, try again. Um, don't try to make it all work because if you break these constraints, it will wonk out on you and then you won't be able to get it back. So just control Z. It's not worth trying to figure out how Fusion works. <laughs> um, so there you go. See, I am eyeballing it. Um, this is going to be really handy for people who actually have their phones in front of them. Um, probably a little bit harder for us, but like who don't have the phone, but if you hold the phone up to the screen, I honestly would just go off of that. And that's also what I would use if I had a custom case or a case that I'm trying to account for. Just hold it up to the screen, look at the radius, and try to eyeball it. Hit finish sketch, 
and give it a second because it's going to fly through. Like I said before, this is the very beginning of the model. So what you're seeing right here down on the right, your computer probably will be very fast and not have this problem. But it's literally changing that number, the, the corner radiuses, and it's just going to go work through the entire model. And it's going to combine all of that back together and it's going to fix your radius. So what I have started doing, and I've spent too much time on this too, is I've started making models of the iPhones. So the Pro Max will have one, um, and I'll upload the other ones as I can. Um, but yeah, just if you are in the file, the new files that I uploaded um, on Maker's World, just turn this on. Oh, sorry, my computer is buzzing out. So there's the iPhone. As you can see, that radius is not at all close. I was doing it to show you. Um, yes, not the same. So you can toggle what you can see on and off with these eyeballs, and you can take it out. If you want to just eyeball it by yourself and not, you know, trust my model, which is totally understandable, you can do that. Um, so see, this isn't working. So I'm going to go back down here. Again, you can scroll and see the timeline. You're towards the beginning, and you're looking for the sketch that says iPhone. Here we go. I'm close to it. iPhone profile. I'm going to left click, I'm going to right click, and then I'm going to hit edit set, sketch. So if you go into the wrong place, you can always hit the escape key. Just hit escape and it'll back you out of wherever you're at. Oh, I should say, if you select the wrong thing, <laughs> of course it doesn't work. Okay, so we saw the model, it's definitely a tighter corner than I have. So again, I'm just gonna left click to select this point, and then I'm gonna left click and drag. Just clicking and dragging, slowly go really slow. You can try to do um, another constraint on it, but I wouldn't. I have tried it and it, it, it just wonks out. So I would just drag it by hand if you were trying to customize it to your model or your case. So again, it's going to finish. It's going to combine all of that stuff. It's going to go through it. You shouldn't have any errors on this. If you do, it'll pop up in the corner, but you shouldn't. This is actually pretty simple as compared to the length and the width. Simple as in how to do it. Um, so a little bit tighter. And again, I know this is kind of annoying, but it, this seems to be the best way to do it. I'm going to go ahead and See, I didn't left click first, so left click to select and then drag it just a little bit. Finish sketch. And let's see, I feel like that's actually pretty close. Um, I'm sorry, my phone's going off. Um, so yeah, I feel like that's pretty close. And you can see exactly, yeah, so there you go. I would say that's pretty good. Go a little bit tighter if you wanted to. Um, and again, you can just turn this off if you want to see it. Um, I went ahead and also added test slices for the MagSafe charger and the watch charger because people are having problems with that. So the MagSafe charger, I found out, I was trying to do 56.4. Um, I found out that I, even though I put it in the parameters, it actually downstream was changing. So I'm going to change all my models and fix that. I'm so sorry for anybody who's had problems with this. Um, so if you click, left click, just to select, one click, and click the circles, you'll see in the bottom corner, it'll tell you the radius. So then you need to multiply that by 2 to get your diameter. And now I have changed it back to Scott's. So Scott's was 56.35, and that's where all the models will be now. Um, if you change this, you would go in here, and you're going to do press pull. Click it once to select the tool, and then you're going to choose your face, which is going to be this ring. When you're trying to figure out the size, you are clicking these lines, but whenever you're going to actually adjust it, we need a face. So click it once with the left click to select it. If you mess up and select something else, it's okay. Either click it, click off of it, or if it's really going wonky on you, just hit escape, and that'll cancel the whole thing. And just try again. Um, so press pull, and we're going to click this. And you see now there's an arrow. It's showing you which direction it'll pull. You can try it by hand. Um, Fusion is really touchy, and it does this a lot because it's annoying. Um, you're not going to need to move it. Um, they do it by 5 millimeters, but you're never going to have to do it that much. So um, let's say I wanted to add 0.25 on each side. Uh, technically, I would want to add uh, 1.125, 1. 1. I think, if I was going to do that. This is where I can't do math. So let's just say, anyway, you're going to add um, 3 millimeters. So you're going to do 1.5 because it's adding it to each side. And 1.5. And see how whenever I clicked it, it came up with the box. This is where you could just type in the number. You can also type it in there and uh, top right and then hit enter. And there you go. To check it, you would just click that line and see what you got. So now the radius is 2675, which you have to multiply by 2 to get the diameter. Um, again, control Z is your best friend. Just undo it and do it again. Um, if you change this, 
the test slice will change, just like the faceplate. Um, I also included the MagSafe charger. Scott's was really tight. I printed it out. I could get my Apple Watch charger in there, but my gosh, you really had to shove it up there. And also, it scares me to try to get it out because it's it's so tight. So I increased it by just a little bit. I increased it by 0.3, I think. Um, but if you want to check that, you can just click the circle on the back. So I am rotating. You can use this cube up here to rotate. Um, you can also use your middle scroll key, your scroll on your mouse, pushing it down and then holding on the shift key and get to the bottom and click this right here. So that's where it's sitting and it'll see down here it's the radius is now 28.22, which is what I've changed it to. Um, Scott's was exactly 27, I believe. Um, I don't remember now, but um, now I have created a analysis section for you. So if you wanna click up here on the left, click that. And it should, there's like three different ones, but there, just click until you see the one that cuts it to where you can see the MagSafe charger spot, or the watch charger spot, and there you go. So you can kind of also measure it here and just try to figure it out if you can't get to it. So if you want to change this, you can um, turn off your analysis. It's just easier this way. Turn on your sketches, and it should show up. If it doesn't, you'll just have to keep toggling these eyeballs until you find it. But I believe, yeah, it's Puck Profile. So what we're going to do is we're going to right-click, we're going to hit Edit Sketch, we're going to go into the puck profile and you'll see there there is a constraint on this circle so if you change this it should fix everything so let's say i want to do 30 instead of 28 um 28.22 i'm gonna do 30. so i'm going to change this radius um to 15 and then i'm just going to hit enter and there you go um hit finish sketch to get out make sure it let like give it time to compute everything because again you went to the very beginning of the history and you've changed everything so there you go and now if we go down here you can see it's all adjusted um and just double checking you can click the sphere you can click here to see the bottom hole see how the bottom's cut out now to be a radius of 15. so it will all change i made it so it should all change you shouldn't have a problem um, and again, if you want to test it, you could print a test slice because this is the slice of where the charger sits. So yeah, I hope this helps. I hope it helps you do the radius and the diameter um, for the backside charger um, and the radius is for the corners of the phones. I'm just trying to keep this short and sweet. So thank you so much, everyone. Um, I really appreciate the feedback and I really appreciate people telling me thank you because it makes all this useless iPhone knowledge, um, you know, worth it to me. I now that I know all this stuff, I definitely am trying to play with some other ideas, making some other dock stations that are actually my design, and also maybe some cases, because now that I know the technical specs of everything, and I'm making models look fun, why not? <laughs> so thank you guys, thank you, and um, good luck, and let me know if you have any problems.